welcome everybody to our chakra s- series with Dr. Aubrey Wallace, who is an amazingly talented uh, medical intuitive, naturopath, healer, and uh, somebody that I personally see as my medical provider and has provided me with so much great insight into all the things that are going on in the body at any given time. Um, And it changes all the time, right? So what's really awesome about um, Dr. Wallace is she's able to tune into what your body actually needs um, in this present moment. Like what is priority for yourself? And today we're going to be looking at your second energy center, reports, all things to do with relationship, career, money, sexuality, all of that good stuff. And so I um, assume this will be as as action packed as our last call. <laughs> we want to make sure everybody gets a chance to get a reading too today who would like that. And so Dr. Wallace will uh, do a brief discussion about this second chakra and how that impacts your health and well-being. And then we'll dive right into the mini medical readings, intuitive readings. And so if you'd like one, um, make sure that you raise your hand if you're not already up on stage and we'll call you up in the order that we see you on, um, on the app there. So All right, Dr. Wallace, take it away. Thank you. All right, guys, thanks for coming, everybody. Chakra two is the focus for today. And um, last week, we talked a little bit about the root chakra and about being grounded and anchored into the earth, supported by the earth, and also a little bit about ancestral patterns affecting our physiology and our life. Um, This week, we're moving up the chain to the second chakra in... The second chakra in my system is the sacral center and or in the way I see the system is the sacral center and the sacral center is, uh, you know, it's a little bit below the navel and kind of in the middle of where if you're a female where your uterus would be or if you're a male around where your bladder would be uh, and kind of in that deep section on the inside of the lower abdomen that that part you can't really feel right if it's right in the middle. And this is, the, this is our power center in my uh, way of looking at life a little bit. So generally, I kind of the textbook version with the, this chakra is um, the, it's the color orange. Uh, it is the endocrine organ association with this chakra are the gonads or the reproductive organs. So this is ovaries for women and testes for men. So a lot of the endocrine activity in this chakra has to do with that so testosterone and DHEA actually has produced some uh, about a third of the DHEA men produces in in the testes so the their testosterone production and DHEA production is there and for women um, their estrogen and their progesterone production would be associated with this chakra um, they make their DHEA elsewhere so the the Hormonal balance of life is a big piece here. The sexual hormone balance of life is a big piece with this chakra. And our nervous system, um, the pelvic plexus is what is the association with this one. And so that is really the reproductive and elimination organ nerves. So all nerves that are in this area. So this is really about, you know, sexuality um, and letting uh, elimination of things that you don't need in your life. The health, so when we look at this chakra in the in terms of health, if I'm looking at this on the window of health, what I'm looking for in the sacral center oftentimes is physical health would be more reproductive issues, um, sexual issues, lower back pain. Um, so I'd also see prostate here and bladder here. Uh, those are kind of those areas for my focus. And then on the, on the emotional level, this is often more about uh, pa- the use of power so in 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 different terms so kind of an autonomous power the the first the first chakra is really us in the tribe right us connected to our our group as we move up into the second chakra we move into uh, us in 
as an individual one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so it's kind of our first level of me and you expression. And the this is in, this shows up in our lives usually in terms of um, our work, our sexuality, our marriage, um, our sense of personal power and our ability to utilize our power in our life. Um, also, this is our gut level reactions to things. So this is really uh, whether or not we're listening in to our gut and we can, um, we can uh, trust our emotional gut around what we're doing in our life, trust ourselves to stay centered in uh, that reaction level. And so a lot of times it will have to do with an emotional boundary setting <laughs> um, in your life. This also has a set, uh, the creativity center is here. So this in human design, I, I like thinking of the sacral center in human design. Um, if you're familiar with that, the sacral center in that system is, um, is the generating um, chakra. So generators have um, a sacral center that's defined, meaning that it has active energy that it produces. And in that system, we look at, you know, generators are here to generate. They're here to create works and create things and build things and have children and do lots of work, right? So that's kind of the feeling. And then the other designs there, the, you know, the projectors, the manifestors and the reflectors and all have open centers there. So their job is to kind of utilize that work power energy and pick it up and then help to do whatever they do in their own design to, to um, work with it. So the sacral center, we can talk about that more. That is, it's really important in human design to know whether you have an open or undefined sacral center uh, in terms of engaging your work on the work level of your life. Um, so if you want more to talk about that, we should probably play with human design in the future uh, talks in here. Or go talk to somebody who's really good at it. That would work too. But so sacral center, what are we talking about? We're talking about money. We're talking about uh, career choices. We're talking about relationship choices. We're talking about um, integrity choices around um, your marriage, integrity choices around whether you're aligned with what's truly your yes, whether you're aligned with what's your creative flow, or whether you're kind of moving or blocking against it. The, the fear that comes up for the sacral center is really a loss of control. Um, so this goes in all forms of power dynamics. So whether or not you're feeling like you um, just are overwhelmed because you have too much and not enough direction, or sometimes this is fear of being controlled by other people and sometimes this is just a feeling of loss, a fear of losing physical power in life uh, will come in here too. So your strength here is to be able to like work through it, right? Uh, survive on your own, take risks, uh, set your integrity, treat yourself with respect, you know, get up, take responsibility for it and get her done, right? That's kind of the sacral center energy. So when I'm talking to people about balancing their sacral center it's usually around, for me, around, are you able to take a risk? Like, are you in a position in your life where you feel able to take a risk? And when the sacral center is off balance, we need to work with stuff there so that you've either, because, because the power dynamic is not feeling online there, you might actually feel unable to take a risk in your life where it would be a good idea uh, to do. Or sometimes if um, it can be, most of the time it's that it's blocked and the person is, is just not taking the risk they know they need to take or they don't feel strong enough to make the choice to say yes to themselves and move forward on that level. Um, indirectly though, that idea there, the fear of loss of control has a little bit to do with safety, right? So oftentimes if people are experiencing problems in their life where they don't have a sense of feeling safe as an autonomous being, um, then we need to work really first with, are you safe? Are you feeling safe first? And then once you're safe, then it may be a position where you can move in, into your own sense of, yes, this is for me. No, this is not for me. And from there, you can start taking risks in your life. So I've noticed for myself what I really, I have a lot of, I'm a manifesting generator in human design. So I have a lot of generator in me and then I flip into a manifester sometimes. And um, 
for me, the energy of the sacral center can be very busy, <laughs> very active, very almost pushy, um, and very, uh, very big on generate, generate. Um, and so for me, when I set my own sacral center in the mornings, uh, I use the phrase, I am peaceful. <laughs> because I like, I do feel like it's good to take a risk. Um, and then I can feel that sacral energy working for me. But oftentimes I find myself kind of pushing myself more as a manifesting generator. I'm pushing myself into taking lots of risks, doing lots of things. And for me, it helps me to slow down and just feel peaceful there because that is kind of that balance to me between feeling safe and also feeling powerful in uh, moving forward around my own yeses in life so that I can take a risk and move on what I need to do. So you want to look at, am I safe to express my power? And um, am I able to take a risk? I think that's a pretty, pretty good synopsis there. I love it. Okay. So, ready to dive into the readings? Absolutely. Let's, awesome. Let's play. Okay. Looks like, uh, Shannon, we've got you up first, and then Stacy is next. Hi. Sorry. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. How are you? Fantastic. How are you today? I am good. good. Taking a risk. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, I'm pretty much open to anything today, but I do have a quick question. So oh. I am a I am a generator, and when yeah. I was doing some cards the last couple of days around um, abundance and things like that, um, I got um, that I that I'm too risky, and I'm wondering <laughs> if that's because <laughs> I'm a generator. Okay. And maybe that's, I need to be careful with that. So generators, as far as human design in manifesting things, you guys, I mean, we uh, really just are law of attraction straight out. Like that's how generators are designed in human design to um, manifest, which is to put the information out to the world of what you want and then wait. You have to wait to respond. Um, so you wait for the world to give you something back. And then when it does, you line up and generate with that. So you say yes to it or you say, and then, and you pull it in and manifest it. Mm -hmm. So if you are sending it out to the world, but not waiting for the response, I don't know if that's it, but if you're according to that system, if you're doing that and you're not waiting, you will feel frustrated. <laughs> like you'll start to feel frustration with the situation going on. And then the information there is just slow down and wait and then and then listen in for your yes. Is this my yes? Is this lined up for me? Is this not lined up for me? That's kind of the basic generator 101 there on manifesting. If you're if you're not feeling like you're in integrity in the sacral center or feeling like money's not in integrity or you don't stay centered in your power when you're doing, you know, if money is the manifesting or if abundance is the manifesting, if you're not able to maintain your sacral center feeling of, of power there, which usually just feels like this is right for me, right? Like <laughs> in my gut, I feel good about this. Um, then that would be where I'd probably start just asking yourself. So it's like, slow down and be like, is this what I want? Because sometimes when we try to manifest something that, you know, we can have beautiful, smart, amazing, grand visions of the sky, right? <laughs> but then when I ask, so I could say like, I want a Tesla or something. And then I will ask my body and it will be like, do you want a Tesla? And my body's like, no, I don't want a Tesla today, right? So <laughs> if, if my gut level is not there, then I'm not going to be generating. Okay. So slow down and ask yourself yes or no questions is kind of the easy version. Is this, is this what I want today? Is this what I want right now? And it has to be in terms of yes or no. Okay, that makes sense. Because okay. you were saying that in the second, um, you're able to take risk and things like that. And I'm one, and I, I'm a big risk taker. Yeah, well, you have a very strong sacral center. So that, that's not an imbalance often for you, right? 
that part might just be a balance. Happy mm -hmm. for you. Um, you feel like you're feeling like taking risks to the point of it being problematic? Well, I'm wondering if that's the cards I've been getting is that they've been, you know, uh, you know, reversed fool and, you know, just be, be careful, maybe plan more out of balance, that type of thing. Um, sorry, there's somebody who's got a whole lot of noise. Is there everybody muted? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, let's ask. Can we ask about that, Shannon? Yeah. Yeah, go up. Let's go up to the team. All right, Shannon, risk taking. Let's see what your team wants to play with. Okay, so what they're showing me is like, there's a, <laughs> they're showing me like all your energy is coming up above your heart center and into kind of like the fifth chakra area. And it's just like running on top of the water. It looks like it's like running, 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 running really fast up there. And so if I were to answer that in terms of a second chakra imbalance, it wouldn't be that you're not taking a risk. It seems more like you're not anchored in your gut, right? Your, your mm -hmm. energy is not anchoring into the earth. It's staying up here on the, on the metaphysical plane a little bit. And it's like running really fast up there. It's going, it's going gangbusters up there, right? So if you, I'm seeing kind of the sense of like the vortex in Abraham Hicks, right? Like you have this huge vortex of stuff that's all up there ready to play. But it's not coming through the throat center down. It's not making it to the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what help? And that's what I'm saying. It seems like you're trying to drink the ocean, right? So you want to like back up and be like, which part of the ocean do I want in this two minutes? <laughs> like, which, which thing would I like to manifest today? And, or in this moment and pick some, it had the gut level. It has to be believable, right? It has to be kind of humanly believable. These are, these are the lower centers are our, our animal. It's not animal. There are physical, there are physical world centers. So they're being a human in reality. And so, and in particular, the sacral center is, you know, finances and career and money, I mean, and relationship and marriage and contracts at that level, um, those things. So if things come up in that area, you would start with that being your, your um, what is it? What does Abraham Hicks call it? Your rockets of desire right? <laughs> like you figure out what it is desires there in the sacral center right what it is what is it that my human part of me really wants mm -hmm. um, and then ask pick one little part of that or a step towards a part of that and just go after that because you've already manifested it all in the upper realm it feels like it it just has to be ask wait align okay that okay. makes sense okay so um then um i'm wondering if it's running really fast up in the fifth and so i'm not grounded so it sounds like i need to maybe work on my route a little bit more during these times what i'm seeing isn't making a huge amount of sense to me <laughs> so i'm seeing like it looks almost like a pond where like the top of the surface of the lake is above your fifth and below and that's actually pretty close to the eoe report i'm realizing right now um the 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 neck down is like under the water right and the the throat up is above running on the surface so um help what they're showing me is almost like a lotus like growing your just growing um one stem down into into your sacral center and then let's see about grounding it to the planet I don't, I feel like you already are very grounded. When you move into that aspect of you, you turn into a mountain, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you, it's like one or the other for you. It, it's pretty hard to maintain. I am the entire cosmos and I am the entire mountain simultaneously in your feeling state. Like those are complicated. Right. <laughs> so, so, but feeling, feeling the mountain, but then one line is what they're showing me connect with like one lotus root down from your from and i see it coming from like the crown through the third eye down through and right through the middle of your heart into the sac sacral center into your generating chakra and let it anchor in that and then i see you just kind of like drinking down that stem 
Mm -hmm. one at a time. Okay. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. All right. My pleasure. Who knew what I'm talking about today? <laughs> so, okay. Lotus, we go. All right. Okay. Great. So, um, Stacy, you're up next and then Sean and then Aubrey, I'm going to have you take over calling people thank left because I got to get back on the road. Oh, thank you, Carolyn. While okay. I'm still listening in. Okay. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Wallace. Hi, darling. How are you? I am great. Great. Thank you so much. Yay. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm a projector in human design. All right. <laughs> yes. And, but have definitely been operating as a generator for like oh, honey. most of my life doing, 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 and then totally burned out um, sorry. like a couple of years ago. And I'm like, oh, okay. I see why. Yeah. It's supposed to be more of the guide kind of energy. Um, so I guess in, I'm definitely open to anything um, that comes or what my guides say, but um, sticking to the theme, like how can I operate? What's the best way for me to operate more in my power? I feel tons of energy, like rumbling within lots of, you know, oh, yeah. things going on inside me. And I just would love to see what my guides say would be the best way for me to utilize this power and energy. Absolutely. Okay. Um, we go to guides first. Uh, let's go to Stacy. Here we are. All right. Okay. So what they're showing me for you is you're you have a you you feel very expansive. Right? <laughs> very expansive would be the word I would use for you. And. I don't know if it's me today, but it feels like there's still, there's for you too, I'm also feeling kind of this weird cutoff thing. I'm feeling it more at about your heart center. Um, and it feels like, it doesn't feel bad cut off. It just feels like there's like, um, for you, it almost feels like oil and water. I don't know how to explain it, but like there are two different vibrations in your field right now. And the one that's up is just like expansive energy, <laughs> big. And the, the part that's kind of the, you know, the lower part of the field feels like it's, it's, it's like also watery to me, but it's a little bit like there are these clouds of things kind of like floating through the water. And, and it doesn't feel, um, you know, it doesn't feel bad. It feels more dense, pretty groundless. <laughs> I would say it feels kind of groundless. And then it has kind of these things in there that are kind of just kind of floating through, like almost like algae in a pond. <laughs> um, I don't know why I'm having all these water references today, but let's see if they can help. How can she best utilize her power? Oh, and that's, of course, the, you know, they're like, she already does. Okay, thank you. Uh, what is the best question to ask? So they're saying, what do you want? Wow, that's a, <laughs> um, oh gosh, I, <laughs> I mean, ultimately it's just, you know, um, being who I'm meant to be out in the world and that's so many layers. It's like a hard question to answer, but I guess that's the Always. over thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like that might even be what they're saying is to just go back to the question. So to me, one of the things I see work really awesomely in the sacral center for projectors is go move through different energetic environments, like literally go run around. <laughs> Like, I don't know if it's run around, but like most of the projectors I know love to like drive places or go sit by the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. Or go, go even walk through a city sometimes feels really good. You just get your sacral center into a different environment, right? Where, because you pick up, you have an unlimited sacral center. You can pick up the energy of any system you're in, right? So you're, you're picking up all that power around you and you can, and then if you're invited to project, which would be lovely, um, you know, then you can show people exactly how to most efficiently be successful with the use of that power. <laughs> right? That is, that's a cool toy, right? Not a toy, but that's why projectors are needed and amazing, right? So, but oftentimes that if we're trying to jam you into a, a square peg or whatever, that's just you, all projectors I know work. We all, they all work a lot and they feel a lot of pressure to work mm -hmm. also, yes. 
um, often. Yeah. And the thing I see that helps the most is actually getting out of that pressure, like walking, going somewhere else where they just feel a flow of a different dynamic. Mm -hmm. So you might see it will matter what project you're in very strongly. Uh, what you what let me they're trying to tell me to give it to you a different way. You have a really expansive energy. Therefore, I am hoping the universe will point you at things that need to be expansive. <laughs> okay? And so you really want to line up with what you want in the world and then have that come to you. Right. So that you can put your beautiful, expansive gift to work in an area that will expand what you want to see in the world. Beautiful. Yep. That was pretty general. So yeah. <laughs> hopefully that made some sense. It does. I get it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So nice to see you again. You too. All right. Let's see if I can pull people up here. So it looks like Sean's next. Hey, Dr. Wallace. Hi. Look, I don't have to do anything. You just unmute. That's exciting. <laughs> I'm paying attention. How, how are you doing? I'm doing quite well. Thank you. All right. What can we play with today? You fill in anything in particular? Yeah. So I've been, you know, I've been on this journey and I've been doing a lot of meditation and, and manifesting sort of unlimited potentials and jobs and career and money and health. And awesome. I have some choices to make. I've, I've got several um, job avenues I can go down right now. And so I was just curious as to what you saw from okay. that perspective and, and maybe just overall sort of direction of my health. Awesome. So we got job and health. All right. See what the guys would like for Sean. Tune my channel. There you are. <laughs> okay. So the first thing they're showing me for you right now is that you have, you feel like you're, if you were a generator, it was on. <laughs> I feel like your, your <laughs> sacral center feels very active, very ramped up, very powerful yep. right now. Yeah. And so feels it's like, rrr, rrr. and so my sense there is almost like you can do whatever the heck you want. Like, you can do it, whatever you do and generate is going to work. Like it's going to generate for you. Um, That's what it's so been feeling like. Yeah, I it feels like that to me too, at least. So let's see where they want you to go with that for career. Um, so I'm getting that there are three things. Is that right? That is exactly right. Yeah. Okay. And they all of them actually, for some reason, I feel like, uh, they feel kind of light right now. Like it's not, uh, they don't feel like they're, you know, necessarily on contract yet or whatever. Like it feels like they are kind of lightly in your field. They're showing me the second one is strongest, <laughs> I don't, but I don't know which order they're in. Um, and it feels like the third one has the most potential to me to be expansive, but right now I don't feel any ground on it. Like I'm not feeling like it's on the ground yet. It's not in your hand yet. And yeah. the second one, yeah, so it feels like the first one kind of feels, I would say, resistance or a tiny bit of resistance there. So yep. I might, yeah, you might actually just see if, just ask yourself, you know, Sean, do you want that first job? No, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah. That's a no. Yeah. There we go. Okay, yeah. good. So, yeah. Sean, and then and I'm on PTO, so it's it's <laughs> all right. So there's a lot of out. resistance. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So yeah. that's on the way out. All right. So anything they want to say with a the blessing there? Yeah, interesting. The They're second just, one. That's a celebration. Just celebrate leaving is what I'm feeling yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Second one. Okay. I do feel like between the second and third one, there's just a little grace right now. You need a little bit of grace between those two. So I would probably yep. wait. Yeah. I'm not yep. like wait to do anything, but just give it a little bit more time. There seems like there's a momentum that's going to need to come on that third one before it's going to be obvious with, with what's the best way to go. Yeah. That's very dead on. Okay. <laughs> nailed it on so, that. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. So help. Yeah. Uh, we can try health very briefly. Health, sick, anything health. We'll give you a one for the road. Health. 
health is feeling pretty good. So they are high fiving you on your health. That's all I saw. A straight yeah, out okay. high five. Go. Okay. Um, yes. And the feeling is like that momentum of like happy. Yeah. <laughs> like a happy yeah. feeling is is now pervasive. So whatever the symptoms look like, that is health usually for me. Just maintaining yeah. that kind of flow. Yeah. Perfect. No, that's exactly how I feel. Yeah, it's exactly how I feel after all of our sessions. And, and so this is very validating. Thank you. Oh, so great. Thank you great, for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Oh, my, me too. All right. So I think I have Brenda next on the list. I hope I have you guys in order. Brenda, do you have a question today you want to play? See if you can unmute yourself. Oh, oh, she went away. Let me see if um, I can invite you to speak, if I'll get that right. Let's try that, see if that works. Can you, you just want to hit unmute on that bottom right. There it is. There it is. We got it. Both of us are learning. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, me and Clubhouse are having an interesting relationship. <laughs> Thank I you. I understand. Well, I'm, Thank I'm you glad we met. Okay. Hi, how are you today? Hey, um, I'm doing great. And um, thank you for the quick overview of Sacral Center. I'm, um, I wasn't able to make it on the last call. So uh, very nice to do the chakra centers and interesting. You bring up human design. Um, I would be someone that would like to delve a little further into that. So if that's something oh. you are thinking of in the future, I'd be up for that. And awesome. I don't know anything about it except for it showed up for me. Oh, it's probably been about six months ago. So when you brought it up just now, I'm ro rolling in my mind. I'm going, I have a book. I have a book. I know <laughs> I, I've done something about this. So I walked into my bookcase and there it is. And there of course I printed out my chart awesome. and I should have, should have been paying better attention when you were talking about generators, because it looks like that's what I am. Congratulations. And, um, yeah. And I make my decisions from my sacral center. I listen to my gut, yes. which is absolutely right. Um, so I'm, I'm not really, um, you know, feeling like I, you know, have any questions or anything, although I'm always interested to hear what you have to say. Um, and as far as a, from a medical standpoint, I neglected to ask you last time, my right knee. Okay. I've got so a chronic thing going on with my right knee and it's been going on for about a year, which is chronic is unusual for me. I got you. And so I'm just curious about that. All right. We so can take it right away. Aubrey. Knee. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Right knee. Brenda. I can get my tune, tune my channel. There you are. Okay, right knee. Eight, six, two. Okay, so we have eight. Eight is my other category. We might give that one a second. There's an ancestral pattern and an environmental toxic something or other. So let's look at the ancestral. I actually get mom's side, even though it's on the right, which is a little unusual. And I have, I believe, a grandfather. So let me see if we've got that one. Is That particular grandfather feels more like mediumship than a, just a... <laughs> so hold on a second. Grandfather, mom's. I do have three gen... This is your mom's dad or your mom's dad, dad, mom's, mom's dad, excuse me. So we have your mom's grandfather on her mom's side. Um, and what do we got? We have an anything. <laughs> Go figure. All right. What is this about? So what I feel from this man is um, he feels noble would probably be the word I would use, or at least extremely um, respectful is kind of the feeling I have from him. Like he seems like honor is a very central part of him. Um, and he's showing me like taking a knee out of honor, like going down on one knee. And I believe the pattern there is feeling kind of like, that, like taking a knee. <laughs> um, uh, help. 
he's showing me sometimes he there's sometimes when you do that and it's right and sometimes when you do it out of respect and being an honorable respectful person and it isn't right <laughs> like this is not necessarily the time to take a knee uh what is that help he's saying it definitely depends on the environment so two Oh, we've already talked about this, but I don't think you're in the right location environment right now. <laughs> so, you know, you just, your emotional environment is really determined by your, by the sun and other things, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. right now you're not quite at the right emotional and not quite in the right environment that's most supportive to you, your health. And then your, this taking a knee thing. Did you know your great grandfather on that side? Um, <clears throat> no, I didn't, but the taking a knee part is right on. Okay. So, so it, I, I, the, I mean, you, it makes sense to me. And what I was feeling from you was, yeah, sometimes I do it and it's right. And sometimes I do it and I'm just, you know, being the martyr. Gotcha. Um, so pay attention and, to which is which. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Pay attention to that. Okay. Um, so eight. Okay. Let me see one more time with eight. So eight. Again, I think this is life purpose for you. So I feel like you're, um, there are these waves I'm feeling of your life purpose where it's like the waves are in or the waves are out, right? And there, when the wave is in, it feels like life picks you up and makes you do stuff. <laughs> and um, and then, then there'll be like a time out feeling, which that isn't the most common generator feeling for me. So I'll just say that. That seems a little bit more like a manifester, but I will, the the feeling there is like um you uh you're in a phase where it's on the out phase right you're not mm -hmm. in a production phase you're in kind of a, a rest phase and so this feeling of taking a knee not taking a knee kind of being the old pattern coming forward from your ancestors so that's hitting root chakra and it's hitting your legs like your legs and knees right um mm -hmm around your actions so you want to it's trying it's like your knee is trying to say um pick and choose right? pick and choose where you want to put your energy right now because you're kind of in the low energy phase of of these bursts of creation you do in your life okay that makes sense okay and and just to validate the waves being out i'm in a place where my business is moving out and I'm looking for what's next because I'm closing down my business. Oh, so, okay. uh, you know, um, I hear what you're saying and thank you very much for sharing. Thank you. And I mean, my kind of my general on knees is almost always feeling supported if that helps mm -hmm. you on the masculine yeah. side. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah. Thank you. All right. And let's see. And happy solstice. I think I have you too. And thank you for reminding me. Happy solstice, everyone. I think we have Michelle up next. Michelle, uh, let me see if I can invite you to the stage so that I can make sure. Nope, you're already on the stage. We're good. I think you can just unmute. Let's see if it works. Okay. Oh, can you hear me? Worked. Yay. <laughs> yes, I can. Hello. Yay. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Um, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> Carolyn just invited me, so I'm not exactly sure um, the elements of human design, but I do have some questions. Okay. Um, yeah. How can I help? This is, thank you for coming. Also, yeah, of you, course. Usually, usually we just do readings. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, I would love a reading. Awesome. And in particular, um, I would, I have um, arthritic knees. Okay. And they really have a negative impact on my life. Gotcha. Um, and the, they have not been able to really do anything to help them. So I'm thinking I have to wait for surgery, which okay. may be in about 10 years. <laughs> So I'm wondering if you have any um, insights as to that. And then just in general, um, what a reading would say about career path. Okay. Let's see if we can get some snapshots here quickly. All right. So knees. Michelle. If I can get you tuned in. There you are. Okay. Arthritic knees. Oh, my. Okay, um, 
So I actually see your energy field completely cut off at your knees. It's knees down. You're, it's almost like there's an ice. It's like ice there. They just like cut the knees down off. And it's almost yeah. like I can't, I can't feel your feet. And um, the, I can't feel the feet at all. That's really wow. Uh So let me ask about that, please. What on earth? Seven, three, two, and seven. So that's a system of stress. Um, they are saying that is a medical system. So we may not, it may just be that the medical system is not the right uh, approach <laughs> for this. Mm -hmm. um, but let's see if there's another system of stress there. Location. Um, I do think, boy, I can't, you know, the root chakra for you is hard for me. I can't feel you grounded easily there. Uh, mm -hmm. It feels like you're, it's like, the feet are just missing. So what on earth? Okay, let's see if we've got three. Three is usually an allergy. And which allergy? Environmental and food. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, so emotional allergies, they're big, very big there. Do you already know your environmental and your food? Do we need to go into those? I don't know them, no. Okay, environmental. So I'm feeling, um, they're telling me this is a small amount, like two to 3% is the environmental. So I don't know if it's worth even going into that very much. I, that feels a little bit like kind of the, almost like smog or metals in the air kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. The food feels like it's a food. Yeah. Gluten is definitely there. I'm sorry. There okay. <laughs> Anything else? I do feel they're showing me you have at least three or four food allergies. So it may be worth going after, but probably an easy trick would be to just remove gluten at, and see if your knees change immediately. Okay. Emotional allergy. Okay. Your emotional allergy, an emotional allergy to me means um, you hit a trigger of a stressor and then you have kind of an emotional reaction and it's, mm -hmm. too, it's like an emotional overreaction. It's just kind of, it's a big one. It's kind of when we hit a tr trigger, we have these big reactions. What I feel from this one is in your knees and it feels like um, just you lose your knees, you lose your feet, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a sense like something bad happens and you, you just don't have any, you don't, you don't, you don't have your feet. So um, let's see if they can help me with that too. Oh, darling, you got so much stress on you. <laughs> Your environment is stressful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> please take or leave this. They're showing me like your whole life is kind of like being on an ice skating rink. And I don't know where all this ice is coming from, but it's like you're already skating on ice all the time, right? You're trying to mm -hmm. juggle all these things on the ice all the mm -hmm. time. And you're just, and you're good as long as you're in the flow and moving. And I feel like they're showing me you more like a hockey player than like a figure skater. <laughs> like, yeah. like you're a little like getting through the obstacles. You're like, dang, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And yes. And then, but if it gets to the point where it's like all the moving parts just get get spread out on the ice and everything swirl, swirling all around. That's the point where you're just like, go to your knees, right? You're yeah. like, I can't. This is all of y'all. <laughs> Boom. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's kind of the feeling emotionally. So if you start to feel like I've lost my feet, I can't get my feet. Just pay attention because that's, that's a reactive thing. That means I just got triggered somewhere. Mm -hmm. So you want to just kind of look back and be like, okay, what triggered me? And let's get backwards from that and see if I can keep that out of the game. Um, okay. Gluten, they're giving me gluten is about 54% of the pain. Okay. Uh, the stress is 900% though. <laughs> oh <laughs> so my gosh, okay. I think the stress is a big portion of it. Um, and that's, in, that's your environment, Darlene. That's like an environmental toxin is kind of the feeling there. So I would probably look, work into getting the environment around you. If there's any way to change your environment um, mm. so that it's less stressful on you more than so you'd move out of the stressful environment ideally <laughs> right mm -hmm. um, so that you have less of that hitting you is that in terms of career let's check career wow career is a whole conversation so that might be one you, we might want to have a <laughs> okay whole conversation about they're showing me like you you're really in a box on it is what they're showing me like you've put yourself in a very rigid box mm -hmm. and 
Um, so I think that would maybe take some time in listening and talking or work. If you work with Carolyn already, really listening and talking around, you know, is that your box <laughs> and is that mm -hmm. box for you? And, um, and just the idea that I can imagine if you have the level of loss of control feeling I'm getting with this other stuff, that being in a really rigid, strong, supportive box kind of feels good, right? Mm -hmm. Like it feels like at least I'm not in complete crazy out of control. Like I got mm -hmm. my box, right? right? But it also feels constrictive to me. Like it mm -hmm. feels like it's it's not allowing any a lot of self-expression. Does that make oh, sense? Oh, definitely true. Yes, that yeah. does make sense. Okay, so probably the first thing I do just on a logistics point is take gluten out, see how that goes. And start, and maybe just don't play with doctors for a minute. <laughs> like mm -hmm. stay, away, stay away from doctors for a minute or do whatever you're doing, but just don't take that too seriously because you're kind of in the wrong camp for their, for their way of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if we need to replace them, we can replace them later, right? But right. They'll, they'll just say, don't worry, it'll get worse is usually what they would say right now. Exactly, um, yeah. yeah. And I didn't even get a musculoskeletal on here, which is very odd. Right. Mm -hmm. So if, if it's just a stressor and then some allergens and a major thing is your environment being in the wrong environment. Um, yeah, I think for you, we would do good to actually do a real reading at some point. OK, thank All you right. so much. Yes. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Nice. Thank, thank you. you for playing again. You're welcome. Thank OK, you. bye bye. Bye. All right. Okay, I think we have Terry up next, and I think you are on the stage. Let's see if we got you. Terry, can you undo your mic? Okay, there it is. I was like, hey, I we got it. Now. Oh my gosh, I'm here. I know, sometimes <laughs> they're just weird. I kept Hello. clicking on my picture, but that wasn't oh, good. Gotcha. Yeah, it's that mic on the book. You got it. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. So, hi, welcome. How would you like us to play today? Um, I would love some insight. I have physical pain going on, um, which would allude to root chakra stuff. But uh, <laughs> okay, what's what's happening, and, and it might be TMI for all the other listeners. Is less my sphincter muscle is contracted and like spasmed and. Oh everything in my whole like which I can I can know um, just from the line of work I do that it's um, trying to create stability in my pelvis okay. region gotcha. I have bulging discs in my back but like the funny joke of the universe is it hurts me to walk because I have heel pain from these um, bulging discs and it hurts me to sit because I've been trying to because um, everything clenches up to try to create stability dang girl I don't know okay so what the heck is going on with all that that's the question. What's the emotional component that I really need to heal or physically, which is my right path of getting me back to homeostasis the quickest? Awesome. Let's play. All okay. Right. So we'll go with Terry. See if I can find you. There you are. It's like taking me a minute. Sorry. Four. Three, one, four, three, one. Okay, so I got about 70% of it is the four category for me, which is usually like genetic, musculoskeletal, structural, that sort of thing. But let's check. Uh, yeah, so MSK, what we got? So oddly, I'm feeling something at about, I would say, left side T. It's thoracic for me for some reason. I'm feeling a restriction right about... Um, I would say T9, 10, 11 on the left. Uh, and then that feels like a torsion through that QL a little. And then there's a really interesting difference between your right and left sides in your lower abdomen energetically. It's like your right side is almost invisible to me and your left side is like taking all the weight, right? So yeah. it's a strange, um, they're trying to show me uh, the feminine aspect is the left for me and it's like the that it's like the feminine aspect of you is shouldering all of the basically shouldering all of the weight <laughs> um and it's weird because i feel that go directly into the pelvic floor and so i can feel that um i would say third chakra to root on that side all kind of holding stabilizing holding the heavy 
And then on the right side, I'm feeling like this expansive, almost unlimited feeling, open, um, but almost like you're missing your masculine, <laughs> like it went away or something. I don't know. I'm not sure how to explain that. Let's see if we can ask. Help? Yeah. Yeah. So they're showing me, it's like you took your masculine part of your identity and you like brought it out and set it in front of you is what I'm seeing. Like, and then you're like using it like a puppet to go through your life. Please forgive me. I have no idea what I'm seeing here. <laughs> this yeah. is what I'm seeing. So it's like the puppet of the masculine is being used to navigate through your environment. And at, on this assumption on some level that the feminine can't do it, I guess. I don't know. But the fem your feminine to me feels like, an 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 ancestrally, it feels like you have a lot of strong women on your back <laughs> ground. Like you guys, I feel like the women in your family have physical strength. Um, or at least on some part of your family. So there's a, I feel like you have the genetics to have strength, but the, but the confidence in it has been overplayed and the masculine's bringing, bringing the masculine forward. And it, it's like that puppet version of the masculine. And they're showing me that doesn't feel like your, your, your genuine masculine part, I think might be a lot more airy i don't know the right word but like i feel like the true the true masculine in you probably feels kind of like um innovative and like excited <laughs> and like um you know like like kind of light airy energy high energy air sort of like gemini sort of feeling i don't know the right words there but that 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 part of you is is not designed for like heavy manual labor right that part of you is designed for you know, kind of thinking your way to change the world. Does any of this make sense at all? It, it does. And I think okay. that like, I was in some ha heavy dominant masculine energy running a business for so mm. long. And then I burned out. Gotcha. And so it makes sense that okay. I shut that down. So let's see if we can get just to a solution since that's not, that's given me a lot of um, interesting dynamics. Yeah, well, I think if this is right, uh, one of the solutions is pretty easy. You, you call your power back, <laughs> like call that aspect of you back into your body. I call my masculine back. I call, I call my innovation back. I call my decision making back. I call my, I call the part of me that knows what I know back. Yes. Yes. I. I call my power back and then and then feel yourself come in because you know if you came in with female junk uh, it depends on your gender but if, if are you identifying as a she yes yes, yes. then it, you know <coughs> when you identify with a she gender um, you are moving through the life this life in the pelvic center as a female so you do want to be feminine about the way you approach the world with your power and feminine power is different than masculine power feminine power is cooperative it communicates it works together right it works um it is kind of more uh indirect or it will be like considering all the variables, not just like powering through to the goal, right? Masculine power is very beautiful, but it's very direct and it's directive and it's how we run most business, right? It's like, I have to compete with everyone else and get to the top and bust through and do what's right because this is the best thing for the, for the world, right? That's the energy of the masculine aspect. The energy of the feminine is we, are here <laughs> and we need each other and we need to consider what is needed for our generations of our children to be okay and then we need to collectively build it right uh-huh so so often that comes through as um connecting with powerful other women <laughs> or other people and cooperating and not having to carry everything yourself Yes. Okay, I I just went off on some weird tangent. So three, <laughs> three is a, what do we got for you for three? That's 100% emotional allergy. So what do we got there? 
I just hear them say in my head, I can't do it, is what I hear the, the words. I can't do it. So you might look, if you ever, I'm going to guess that's not a normal phrase for you, <laughs> given what I'm feeling from you. So if you do hear yourself hit a point where you're like, I can't do it. If you hear that go through your head, you've hit a trigger. Okay. So you've been triggered. Listen, go back and look and see what, you know, am I puppeting here? Am I trying to use an indirect strategy here? Have I lost my power here? Do I need to call myself back right now? Because if I'm thinking I can't do it, that innovative masculine side of you does not think that. I don't think that innovative masculine side of you is capable of thinking that. <laughs> if I'm feeling it right, that part of you feels like it could, you know, come up with a solution to just anything pretty much. All right. And then I do get a one. So one. I get a bacterial infection. What? And I'm feeling this actually in the sigmoid. I'm feeling a bacterial infection in the sigmoid. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just had a clear colonoscopy, so you know that's all good. 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 What do we got? I'm still feeling it, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what I've got there. Got biofilms. What do we have? Anything. They're specifically showing me the part of the colon where where you reabsorb the water. Uh -huh. And there's a sense there like um, irritation would be the best word I have. I'm sorry, I don't have a really good word for the feeling I have there. If the colon uh, the colonoscopy, I would think, would actually possibly help. Did the symptom get any better after you had to do the the purge? <laughs> no. no, not at all. So. Okay, actually worse. Um, no, just yeah, just the same. There's no change. Like, okay, completely well, uncomfortable all the I'm, time. <laughs> so I'm not sure. I'm getting a bacterial infection there. So I'm not sure what even to tell you about that. So this would one. would it like? How would I treat that? Just diet or um antibiotics or what i definitely uh, not antibiotics i was gonna say i'm not yet. a fan no. of that pass no. so um what i'm okay. actually getting is suppository which is not uh, making a lot of sense to me so just a second suppository what uh good lord darling i got rectal ozone which is pretty far up the chain there anything else i got a different suppository how much are you playing with uh, weirdo naturopaths? <laughs> I, I don't have a, a, okay. a, any. That's... And I'm in Florida and they don't like kind of recognize naturopaths here either. Gotcha. So um, let's see what else they want to do there. That The only thing that would information would give me would be that that's an anaerobic bacteria. Um, anything she can do here. So herbs, um, cleanses, ozone suppository. I'm going to say, I, I'm going to say that one's not really important to look at right now. <laughs> um, okay. Start with the other ones. I'm sorry. I don't know why they're even giving me that. I don't have a clear, I generally think I know a lot of about infection, but I don't, I don't recognize that feeling. <laughs> like I don't recognize that bacteria. So okay. um, I'm not, they are kind of showing me it has something to do like it's coming from the external. Oh, so probiotic. I'm sorry, probiotic. Yeah, a probiotic would be great. Okay. Uh, what do we got? Need a human strain, other strain. They said you already have one. Do you already have one? Yeah, I do. Okay, go after one. it. Yeah, that's all they're saying. I'm sorry, that was probably just confirming that you need to take the probiotic. Yeah, I'll just, I'll increase it for a few days. Okay, there you go. I'll muscle test to make sure I'm taking the right amount. That is a beautiful idea. Probiotics are not always good for everybody. Right. So it sounds like that's what I got for you, if that helps. Yes, it does. I really appreciate okay. your insight. All right. It was nice to meet you. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, thanks. All right. Uh-huh. Bye. Bye. All right. I think we have Linda next. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? I can. How are you doing? I'm 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 good. Yay. Um, I am. I don't, you know, I don't really know my human design. Okay. 
Um, okay. I'm not very familiar, but I'm curious because um, I just made a huge shift in my life that is, um, um, and, and in, in where I live, in, yes. in my relationship. And all the things. All the things. And um, I'm also looking at the the new year as um, a, sort of making bold moves, big big moves um, in my business and getting that built up a lot more. And awesome. I guess I'm I'm I think probably what I'm interested in is I heard you um, read um, kind of where people's energies are. Yeah, um, and so that's what I'm interested in. Awesome. So that's kind of just the like, go to the top. What you get? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the wild card version. Why don't we play that? Right. All right. Anything from Linda? Let's see if I can get my channel on you. Yes. All right. What do we got? So they're showing me for you. <laughs> You're like got a fireball in the middle of your heart. Like, it's beautiful. It's just like, woof, woof. Mm. Like, you, you're just kind of, it's like you have a generator sensation in your heart. Like, you're generating through your heart center right now. Yeah. And, yeah. And they're showing me it's almost sometimes going to feel like you're kind of like a star in the middle of the cosmos, right? Like, you sometimes might feel like you're out in outer space <laughs> a little bit. Like, you're the only one and you're shining in the night. Um <laughs> Let's see what else they got for me. Um, you're in a, there's a sense of being kind of an early star phase. <laughs> so like you are, you're generating a lot of energy there and it isn't quite ready yet. Like you're not quite to the point of the full shine, right? Uh -huh. um, but you're really getting there. <laughs> so, um, and it, they're trying to show me that every single energetic thing that happens on the way to the shine is, is, is precious every step every person every emotion every moment it goes in to build that star right and yeah. in it, you don't have to get anywhere like you don't have to get there right it's more just like a dance of energies um beautifully beautifully orchestrated dance of energies that and please forgive the, uh, well, we're in second chakra, so maybe I can be a weirdo, but feels a little bit like that beginning of orgasm, right? Like you're trying Oh my God, yeah. I can't so, believe how yeah. incredibly on point this is. <laughs> I mean, okay. I cannot believe this. This is, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. So you're in the, <laughs> the build phase, right? Oh, so yeah. let yourself enjoy it. Enjoy oh, this phase, darling. Oh it's, my God. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing you're shining out to the world and this already is, shining. Yeah. This is exactly, I mean, I, I'm surprised you didn't mention sacral chakra because that is lit. But, <laughs> but, I heart, did, I just but, going heart, in heart. Yeah. but heart is, I think that's the part that is really opening. Just the backstory, I moved in with my partner. Yay. And that was a huge kind of death and rebirth of trust and accepting masculine provision and huge step in our relationship and it took it was it there was a big fight before it happened and then we just it was like birth it was like the trauma of birth and coming out on the other side and i'm just and, and what you described about everything in my life with my relationship and my home and my work you nailed it you Yay. every bit of it even the, I mean, the, the, the symbol and the actual, you know, literal orgasm. Yes. <laughs> Go girl. I know. It's, that's it's, happy. It's very, it's super happy. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that energy on the solstice. I, Cause I think we need more of that in the world right now. <sighs> frankly, some of us are feeling like the night, you know? So it's Thank nice you. to have that beautiful energy being generated. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you oh. nailed it completely. <laughs> oh, yay. Thank you. All right. Thank you for joining us and sharing with us. Thank you so much. All right. So it looks like we've gone through everybody as far as I know, unless Carolyn or Christine want to read it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm sitting here just smiling from ear to ear. You totally nailed it for so many people. <laughs> 
and um, fantastic, yeah, especially there, Linda. <laughs> um, so, uh, sure, I'd love, love Carolyn. Sure. All yeah. right. Do you have anything you want me to focus on? Oh my gosh, I'm in such a huge expanded state right now. So, okay. where do I focus my energy? Focus. You got it, Dawn. All right, Carolyn. All right. So what they're giving me for you right now is that you, it's like, it's like you're almost like exploding from the inside out with your energy field, but your like head is hitting the roof of your house. Like you're <laughs> like you're getting kind of pushed up and your but your crown chakra and your head are kind of getting crushed down by the house. Like it's like kind of like when Alice grows big, right? Yeah. In the house, but the house is too small for her. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so they're showing me they're they're showing me that it almost feels like a plate on top of your crown, like pressing down. And um, the work in that case, oftentimes the work is a change of the external world is what's needed in order to make that transition. Uh, but let's see if they can give me more specifics. They just keep saying the house is too small, like your house is too small. Yep. What? Okay. Um, anything else? They're showing me you walking out the front door. <laughs> so we're being really subtle now. Um, apparently you might need to leave your house, I guess. Anything else? Yeah, I do. I, I see him just like, it's looking like letting go of your house, like sweeping it away. Wow. Um, that's like the literal really, house. Is it the literal house? or symbolic or both. Um, everything is always your choice, I'm supposed to say. <laughs> and it feels like starting with the symbolic, but it, what I'm seeing is your literal house physically. So I'm not sure. It seems like going out and thinking about what, what it being in that particular house does that limits you that feels like you have a hard time growing to the next level of something. So I don't think that means sell your house this week or whatever, like, you know, like I don't think that means like that, but I feel like it does mean um, look at how that environment is limiting you. Yes. Yes. Anything else they want to say there? I do, they're showing me this is a beautiful one for the sacral center. This is the epitome of take a risk, right? This is when sacral center is a little bit off. It'll feel like it's really, um, it's ex there's all this expansion and all these different directions, but then the sacral center feels a little bit like, I just don't know, I just don't know. And so when, the, when it feels like that, it's hard to line up and just be in a yes, like a delicious orgasmic yes, right? Um, <laughs> right now that your sacral center is feeling like kind of tired to me like it feels a little worn out so let's see if we can line up with what's there's this they're showing me over the next maybe over the holiday it's a good time to do it find your delicious like it needs to be delicious all the way through like little tiny things this is delicious this is delicious this is delicious like this is just right for me this is just right for me this is delicious for me and go and find those things and give them to yourself. Oh, I love it. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, I've been feeling for a while that I've outgrown my literal house in okay. so many ways. But yeah. uh, I just love the location. <laughs> That's gotcha. the funny thing. I love it so much. But yeah, so they're just that was telling perfect. me that this or better is what I heard in my okay. head when you said that. This or better, right? All right, all right. So when That's you manifest, perfect. <laughs> yeah. All oh, right. Oh yeah, cool. once I set my sights on stuff, then it happens. Awesome. So, okay. Thank you. Well, and thank Christine? you. Christine? See if Christine wants to do a reading or if she wants to do or not. <laughs> um, I would like to look at the energy of how do I get out of my you got it, darling. 
I, I'm supposed, they're already yelling in my head because it's you. Are you in your own way? <laughs> it feels like I, I, I have all these steps that I'm ready to take and I'm not motivated to actually do them. And it feels like it's some sabotage and, and you know, I don't know that I, yeah. Okay. I feel me, stagnant. All right. And the image they're giving me for you is that it's very different than stuck. It feels like you're literally on the edge of a cliff. You have your toes on the very edge of the cliff and you're like leaning out <laughs> over the cliff. And there's, there's a deep cliff, right? It's just like nothing. I can't see anything off that edge. It's like complete oblivion with some clouds. And I, it feels to me like you're, you're, your toes are extremely strong. <laughs> so you're like, you're holding and gripping with these like super strong toes and just literally defying gravity, almost leaning out onto that cliff. And then your mind is going, why won't I just do this? <laughs> like, uh, that's what it feels like to me. Like, I think what all it is would be okay. Like, just say yes, if you want it. So I'd have to ask, Christine, do you want to jump? Um, a big part of me does and a part of me doesn't. <laughs> okay, so that's an mm -hmm. I don't know, darling. Yeah. So when you're in an I don't know, it's a no until it's a yes. Okay. And I'm sorry about the cliff. That feels pretty intense. <laughs> like, that feels like really scary. Well, my next, my next leap is huge. And so it yeah. makes, that makes sense. Um, and I, they're showing me too, you know, sometimes there are like, I've, I'm literally seeing a Peter Pan flying ship coming to you, <laughs> like coming through the clouds, just like, and then when, like the minute you jump, you just are jumping down onto the deck. I just but, had a flash of the Mandalorian, you know, whenever. there you go. <laughs> yes, that's perfect. <laughs> so you, um, I do hear trust your timing. I feel like it's very, um, they're laughing at that comment uh, and that it is, I, precise is not even quite the right word there. <laughs> like it's your, your timing is always on. What do you mean by that? I'm not tracking for some reason. What do they mean by that? Um, the feeling is you, you can take time and somehow bring it to, and th they're showing me like taking time as if it were something physical and putting yes. it down in front of you on, on like a, putting it in front of you and then making it work, right? It's yeah. like you're pulling in all these things, almost like you're weaving a little crocheting something. I don't know the right words, <laughs> but you're like weaving these things in so that the times work, the timeline works. And then you left, lift it up and send it out to the world. That's what I saw. Okay. Thank you. So um, time feels like it might be a little more variable for you than others, but that it's precise. Like you, you know how to do it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. Well, well maybe well. we should let people be free today on this solstice to go and be still because it's the day of that. Yes, yes. Powerful energies today to let go of what no longer serves and to really step into and take those big risks just like you said because that's where the juice in life lies not in the same old same old right yeah yeah so once again a great great call thank you so much dr wallace and uh we really look forward to coming back again in two weeks at the same time yes wednesday what day is that june here. Yes, we're on, that looks like the 11th, I believe. Nope, that's the 4th. We're on fourth. January 4th is the next one. Yes. And it will be on chakra, chakra number three, which will be, what's the focus? So chakra three is the solar plexus chakra, which is all about identities and the different identity constructs we play with in our lives. So how we define ourselves, the I am. So that'll be an adventure of identity to play with. Yes, a good one to start the new year off. And also, I just wanted to mention to the people that if you'd like a more in-depth reading of Dr. Wallace, you can reach out to me. 
reach out to her um, you can get them the URL for that. Or... That's just, yeah, drabreywallace.com. I have it in the chat oh, as well. Okay, and okay great. There. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. Yeah. yeah, it's such a gift to do that in depth reading with her, and she um, also does an intuitive drawing. And so you have a visual image of the energies that you're working with at the moment. And it's a really powerful experience to, to be seen so accurately, like you witnessed today on the call. A lot of people going, Yeah, that, that was dead on. So, uh, okay. Carolyn, I think you're starting to break up a little, so maybe we got this perfectly timed for you, and you can head off to your adventures of the week. And yeah, right. with that, then thank you, everybody. So there we go. Happy holidays. All right. Thank you, Carolyn. Have a happy okay. holiday, everybody. Thank you. You too. Thank you. All right.